U.S. national champion Paul Hom is here on a mission. The 21-year-old is a veteran of world competition and comes seeking an individual title. But for ring specialist Jeff Johnson, this is new territory. He'll need his best effort to compete with Olympic champion and hometown favorite Sylvester Chalani. On the women's side, it's a story of youth and inexperience. 16-year-old Ashley Postel will try to run down the competition on vault. And 16-year-old Courtney Kupetz makes her world debut on the uneven bars. The task is huge as the rookies take on the best in their sport. Debrecen, Hungary's second largest city. It is a university town bustling with students located three hours northwest of Budapest. And today in the city's newest athletic facility, Phoenix Hall, we welcome you to the 2002 World Gymnastics Championships. Along with 1984 Olympic gold medalist Bart Connor, I'm Chris Marlowe. This year there will be no team battles or event Finals, just individual apparatus competition. And here are the eight finalists, which include Jordan Yovchev and Marian Dragulescu, the co-world champions from last year. For the United States, Paul Hom will be seventh to go in this very strong field. We're going to start the competition with an exciting competitor, Spaniard Hervasio de Fer. He's 22 years old, and interestingly, the Olympic champion on vault. And he is built for this event. He's strong in the lower body. Watch this opening tumbling sequence. Amazing power and strong Achilles tendons to do that rebounding skill. This is an important pass for him, a combination pass. Double twister, front layout, front one and three quarter. Very clean roll up. In every event for the men, there are five element groups of skills that they must demonstrate in the floor exercise routine. You must show flexibility, as he's demonstrating there, or balance strength moves. Tumbling forward, tumbling backward. Some type of leap, jump, or turn sequence. But at this level, it's really all about power tumbling. And we have one of the strongest fields I've ever seen Look at that. In the men's floor exercise, the routine lasts between 50 and 70 seconds, and he has already fulfilled those element groups that the judges are looking for. All right, a solid finish. Not my favorite final tumbling run. A little anticlimactic considering the other power tumbling runs that he had in that routine. This is incredible, though. It's a double layout with a full twist in the second flip. And you got to have cast iron Achilles tendons to be able to rebound. There's the Olympic, Olympic, rings. Olympic rings in evidence. Here's that final tumbling run. One and a half twister, whip to a double full. A little anticlimactic. Any gymnast here who will go for a more complicated final tumbling run could beat him. Hey, a 9.7 for Hervasio de Fer. First man up, and he will be in the hunt for a medal. Now, 16-year-old Brazilian Diego oh, Matias Hippolito. Uh, set to go, his hometown Rio de Janeiro, a youngster with some talent. I love his tumbling combinations. Watch this double twister there at the end of that combination run. And watch this, is going to be a tucked, double-twisting double somersault in his second pass. Nice. Interesting story about this young man. He is the younger brother of Daniel Hippolito, who was the silver medalist at the World Championships last year on the floor exercise for Brazil. She is the athlete of the year in Brazil because of her success there last year. She taught him everything she knew, <laughs> and he's turned out okay. There's one of those strength type skills that's required of the five element groups. Interesting here at these world championships, we talk about individual event finals only. 
It's like everyone here is a specialist on each apparatus. He's not a very good all-around gymnast, but he's really spectacular on the floor, and this is his place to shine. Good combination at the end of the routine. Five tenths of a point bonus for doing that combination to finish. Here's the one and a half twister, front layout in the front with a double twist, just a little shaky on that landing. Landed a little stiff legged, hard to control it. Like this combination at the end, there's a whip to a two and a half twister, right to a front with a full twist. Very clever finish. Just 16 years old. The scores for. Diego Matias Hippolito, 9-5-7-5. Solid. We have a crowd of close to 7,000 here at the Furnix Hall. Very knowledgeable gymnastics fans, uh, being that Hungary is on the border with Romania. And there is Paul Hom, who leads a very strong American men's contingent. Now, for more on the Americans, here's Bart Connor. Thanks, Chris. Well, so far, the big story at these championships has been the strong performance of the surprising young American women's team. Now, after recent injuries to the top two American women, Tasha Schweikert and Tabitha Yim, the U.S. delegation opted to bring a younger and inexperienced team. In fact, none of these young ladies had ever competed in a world championship competition before. They surprised everybody, including themselves. Now, in the finals today, we'll see the vault and the uneven bars for the women. Ashley Postel will compete. She was third in the all-around at the U.S. championships this year, and she qualified in fourth place coming in today's finals. Another big surprise is Courtney Kupetz on the uneven bars. She qualified in second place after the semifinals with a newly designed routine. On the men's side, well, it's been American Paul Hom's year. He won the U.S. Championships in August, and he has carried that momentum into these World Championships, and he qualified on all three events that he attempted here, the floor, palm horse, and on the high bar. His best chance today will be in the floor exercise. Once again, it is individual apparatus competition, top eight in the world, and Paul Hom, who we'll see a little bit later, will have his work cut out for him. And now we're going to pick up the routine of Bulgarian Jordan Yovchev, uh, the world champion in uh, this particular event, and he can be spectacular. He sure can, and he has a very cleverly designed routine with three of the four tumbling runs ending in rolling out skills. Watch this here. One and three quarter somersault rollout. No possibility for botching the landing. Here's another good combination. Whip to one and a half and another rollout. The judges are so focused on the landings and taking steps on landings that three of the four passes in his routine end in rollouts, which is a smart move in terms of not giving away potential deductions for landings. The is uh, 29 years old, Bart. It, reasonably uh, old for a gymnast, or is that about prime now? Yes, but he is uh, in this new generation of professional gymnasts. Okay. He makes his living. As a gymnast, he lives in the States, but he spends a lot of time in Europe competing almost weekly and makes a pretty good living at it. So the gymnasts are competing longer than they used to back in our era because there's prize money and appearance money available now. Lives now in Norman, Oklahoma. Seems kind of incongruous. <laughs> now Jordan. here's the one tumbling pass where he has to land on his feet. It's a double layout. Oh, just a little hop. Now he's the co-world champion along with Marian Dragulescu of Romania from last year's world championships. And he knows in the finals here you've got to drill all the landings. That little hop may have cost him here. This is a great combination. One and a half twist, front full, front one and three quarter. Beautiful form and execution throughout. complicated move called a laid out Thomas invented by Kurt Thomas back in the late 70s from the American team these are of course the flares and no one does them better than Jordan Yovchev look at the form, flexibility and execution three time Olympian has his sights set on Athens and 9-6-7-5 for Jordan Yovchev so that puts him into second place might have been in first place if he didn't take that little hop on the landing. Paul Hom 
The reigning uh, United States champion is coming up next. We're also going to see Ashley Postel on vault. And Courtney Kupetz on the uneven bars. She is spectacular. And how about ringman Jeff Johnson? All coming up later. Connex Hall, Debritson Hungry, along with Bart Connor, I'm Chris Marlowe. Paul Hom is America's best hope for a medal. A couple of years ago, he was being called an up and comer, but this year he has arrived. 2002 has been a career highlight for 20 year old Paul Hom. The Wisconsin native fulfilled a lifelong dream this past October when he enjoyed the biggest victory of his career so far earning him the distinction of being this year's U.S. National Champion. Winning national championship has been a dream of mine since I was a little kid. And to go up against five-time national champion Blaine Wilson and defeat him was just awesome. Right now, his career is on a roll. He was a member of the U.S. men's team that made history by winning a silver medal in the team competition at last year's World Championships. What I took away from Ghent probably would be just the confidence I know that I can place that high in the future because I've, I've almost done it in the past. So I know that I can be one of the top all-around gymnasts in the world. Not only was he a part of the history-making men's team, but Hom found himself in third place in the all-around competition as he entered the final event, the high bar. In the team competition, he nailed his routine. But on his first release move, he fell. He continued on only to hit and cut his lip on the bar, ending any hopes of a medal. When I hit my uh, lip on the bar, I really can't really think too, I couldn't think too clearly at that point. I was just trying to get off the bar and down with my routine. And then I was just in so much pain and they had to stitch my lip up. I don't really feel like that was my time to win. I think later on it might be a better time for me. I feel like I'm in really great shape right now. My routines are going really well, and I think I can contend with the best people in the world. My goal for this world individual world championships is to, I would really want a medal on one of those three events that I'm gonna be competing on. And of course, a gold medal wouldn't be bad either. So Paul Hom, set on men's floor exercise. And Chris, he's going to go for one of the more difficult single tumbling moves being done in the competition right here for the mount. It's a double twisting, double layout. Oh. Now that move alone is worth four tenths of a point bonus. Important combination right here. Nicely done. Now you talk about his career development. He and his twin brother Morgan were just 17 years old when they went to the Olympics in Sydney. They had their 18th birthday while they were down there. They both have enormous potential. Morgan is not here because he has a very severe high ankle sprain and didn't recover in time to compete at these world championships. Actually, Morgan is a little better on the floor than Paul. Morgan is the reigning U.S. champion. Paul was second this year at the U.S. championships on this event. Oh, beautiful third tumbling run. All he has left will be a laid out double somersault at the finish. You know in his mind he's thinking, boy, I wish I stuck that mount because this is a good exercise. And he's usually very solid on this last run. Nice. Oh, and he sticks the landing. Solid finish for Paul Hom. There's his coach, Stacy Maloney. Coaches him at the Swiss Turners in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Let's take a look at that double twisting, double layout. The most complicated single move being done in these floor finals. Just a little shorter rotation, and that big step there will be a deduction, unfortunately. And the competition is so close at these world championships that he can't afford to make even a minor error. Nice execution here in the Thomas Flares around to a split. And here's that double layout. He was a little bit off, but he's so talented and so strong, he kind of muscles it around and still drills the landing. This guy has enormous potential. Let's see how the judges score it. 
9625, even with the step. A terrific score. And that puts him in third place. So Paul Hom, 9625. And now Romanian Marian Dragalescu. The world champion on the floor and a sensational performer. He has a terrific variety of skills in this routine and a big dismount. He's going to go for a double twisting double back at the end of the exercise. Watch this mount. It's the same tumbling skill we saw from Defer from Spain. Oh, and wow. even higher on that rebounding skill. Double twister, front layout, front one and a half. Ooh. Oh, almost out of bounds. He saved it. Slight deduction there. If he's going to win this thing, the rest of this exercise has to be perfect. He already had a minor error at the end of that second tumbling pass. Sixth in the Olympics at Sydney. He really is a tumbler. He's got one more pass here. He does five tumbling passes altogether. That Arabian half turn into a front flip is one of those required type skills. Now here's that double twisting double back. He'll need to nail it. Oh! oh! Just drilled it. Marian Rogalescu. Romania. A lot of Romanian fans here. We're just about 15 miles from the Romanian border, so. This is an amazing mount. Double layout with a full twist, the same as we saw from DeFair, but even better. Watch this rebound, and he just flies front one and a quarter effortlessly. This is where he almost went out of bounds. Watch how close he is to the line, and he manages to not go out of bounds, which saved him a tenth of a point. And then this was the critical move right here. He had to drill this double-twisting double if he were going to get a big score. And he drilled it. And Dragulescu gets a 9-7-1-2, and that should be good enough to win gold. Dragulescu gets gold, Defer silver, Yovchev gets the bronze, and Paul Hom, the American, finishes fourth. Bart is with the winner. Marian, congratulations. It was extremely close. After your second tumbling run, did you think you lost it? Yeah, no, no. Never give up. I, I tried to do all my best. Who knows? Maybe second, third. I, I was happy also, second or third. There was a very close competition with so many great champions. Did, did you feel extra pressure? Yeah, when I get in the, in, uh, into the arena and I saw 9-7, first place, I said, it's going to be a tough one, difficult. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Romania Marian Dragulescu repeats as world champion. Coming up next, women's vault, American Ashley Postel set to go. This is the famous and very beautiful black ceramic pottery of Laios Fazekas. Now the Fazekas family builds this beautiful pottery in this small ancient town of Naduvar, which is just outside of Debrecen. Now Mr. Fazekas and his family have been producing this type of pottery for more than 300 years. And what I find is interesting is that the name Fazekas actually means potter in Hungarian. I was born in a family where the profession of being a potter has been handed down from father to son for centuries. I've had the great opportunity to improve on some of the techniques of my profession. Some of the history of the region, a tremendous pride in accomplishment. Ashley Postel, the young American in her first world championship, Got to be a little bit nervous tension there right now, Bart Connor. Well, certainly when you look at the field of competitors in the finals, it includes Yelena Zamolochikova from Russia. She's the reigning Olympic champion on this event. It's a strong field. And Oksana Chusovitina, the silver medalist from last year's world championships here as well. 
Starting us up on vault will be Verona Vandeleur from the Netherlands, a 16-year-old. She had quite a disappointing world championships last year in Ghent, Belgium. She had four opportunities to win medals, team all around in a couple of individual events, and came up short every time. Very nice double twisting your Chanko vault, but shaky on the landing. You can't do that in the finals. You gotta nail those. As an all-around gymnast, she is just terrific. Has no real weakness. Look at the height and the body position off the vaulting table. Very nice form. She pikes it down a little at the end, and she's a little out of line. You land on that white line, you lose a tenth of a point. Nine two six two in women's vaulting, you get two. And in the event finals, the two vaults have to come from completely different families. Watch this. She'll do a round off and a full twist on and a pike somersault off. Now, she indicated that she was going to attempt to do a laid out somersault, which means that vault would be a 9-7 start value, but she actually piked it pretty dramatically. This technique is not great. Three-quarter twist on, not a complete full twist, and she pikes it down a lot, so there will be some technical deductions. Look at here. She doesn't quite get around all the way on that full twist on. Very few gymnasts actually do make it all the way around, and the deduction is appropriate. 9-1-1-2 for the second ball. Disappointing numbers for Verona Vendelur. Her total score. Ashley Postel, she is one of America's young rising stars. Let's meet her. Hi, my name is Ashley Postel. I'm 16 years old. I'm from Mitchellville, Maryland. I'm really excited to make the world team. It's such a big excitement for me. Um, I had no idea that I was going to make it, and I'm just really proud right now. The biggest thing, I think, is to be mentally and physically prepared, because if you don't have the strength, then I think it's hard to do what you have to do. This moment right now is pretty big for me. Um, my friends think it's really cool. They're really happy for me too, and they think it's so exciting, and they all want me to come back with the medal. So hopefully I do. So Ashley Postel. Her first chance in world gymnastics competition. Nice ball for her first ball. A little bouncy on the landing. Didn't quite come to a complete stop, but she does a Yurchenko style vault with a half onto the vaulting table and a laid out front with a half off. Very nice mechanics. Start value of a 9.8, but you see she didn't quite come to a complete stop and there will be a slight deduction there on the landing. Good form. How would you describe her strengths as a vaulter? Well, she's a very balanced gymnast. She has good power and technique, but you got to have the speed. She has great speed and body tightness when she hits the vaulting table to launch herself up into the air appropriately. Second vault coming for American Ashley Postel. This will be another Yurchenko style of vault, and she'll do a laid out somersault off the vaulting table with a one and a half twist. Oh, oh. over rotated. Boy, she got a great push off the horse, and she put it up into the air beautifully, but had trouble finding the floor. Maybe just a little over juiced there. Her mechanics are good here. Great push, nice form. She was late at finishing the turn and spotting the floor. That's a tough landing. Watch, she doesn't see the floor until right there when her feet land. Very difficult to plan for a forward flipping landing like that. Her second vault score 9-1-2-5. They take the average a 9-2-3-1. So she is the leader, but it's very, very early. And some heavyweights are coming up. Speaking of them, Yelena Zamolochikova, the reigning Olympic gold medalist in this event. You talk about quickness and speed. Watch this launch off the horse, double twisting oh. Yurchenko. And that's the kind of landing you need at the finals of the Worlds to win. She's 20 years old. 
She's all muscle. Great technique. Watch the power as she pushes off the horse and sets up the twist. She's been doing this vault for about four years, so she has great experience in finding the floor and knowing how to put that landing down. A 9-4-5-0 for Elena Zamolochikova. Not only one of the biggest names in gymnastics, certainly one of the longest names <laughs> in gymnastics. Sukahara style vault, double twister, oh. and again a good landing. That vault, a 9-9 nine, nine start value. So just based on start values alone, she has an advantage over most of the field here. The first vault being a 9-8 start value. This one a 9-9. Nine, nine. This is the Sukahara laid out. A little bit of a form break in the pre-flight onto the table. But she said coming into this competition it was going to be gold or nothing. Maybe that's why she selected to wear that gold leotard today. Lives in Moscow, 9-4-3-7 on vault number two. You average the score, 9-4-4-3. She is our leader, Yelena Zamolochikova. Coming up next, 27-year-old Oksana Chusovitina. A great story we will tell you about next. Women's vault, Yelena Zamolochikova, the Russian, is our leader. And American Ashley Postel is second, but it is early. Up next, one of the great performers in gymnastics history, 27-year-old Oksana Chusovitina. Recently, her three-year-old son, Alisher, diagnosed with leukemia. He has been undergoing chemotherapy, and obviously she has a lot on her mind at these championships. I am hopeful because yesterday he had another operation to remove the dispenser that's doing the chemotherapy and the results of this analysis that were done afterwards were better and I'm hoping he'll be better as the chemotherapy goes on. Chris, she's one of the most beloved figures in gymnastics at 27 years old, still competitive on the world scale, and a lot of her friends and family have reached out to help the son, Alisher. She's living right now in Cologne, Germany, where some gymnastics friends have arranged for them to get treatments at a hospital there. First fall. Whoa, look at the power. Laid out front with one and a half twist, and she just bounced out of the landing. She's an amazing athlete. At 27 years old, she's made three Olympics. She's already had an Olympic gold medal as a part of the unified team way back in Barcelona in 92. If she could make the Olympics again in Athens, would be a four-time Olympian, which just doesn't happen in women's gymnastics these days. The 1991 world champion on floor. She gets a 9-4-6-2, which is good. So the second vault coming up, Oksana Chusovitina. This should be a Sukahara with a one and a half twist, nine eight start value. All right, good power. But I don't think it's gonna be enough to beat that young lady, Zamalochikova, who had a little higher start value and cleaner landings throughout. Good form, one and a half twister. It's incredible that she's managed to still stay so competitive on a world scale. Her fitness level is obvious. She's very strong, very quick, and that's allowing her to stay competitive. A 9-3-1-2, so a little bit lower score on vault number two, but her total score is outstanding, 9-3-8-7, so she moves into second place. Next up, uh, Romanian Juana Petrovski, and when you talk and think about Romanian gymnasts, you have to think of the greatest of all time, Nadia Comaneci. Let's go back for a moment to 1976 when a 10 was a possibility. Here she goes. This girl is so strong and the move that she invented, a front flip on the high bar to a full twist. The crowd is on the edge of their seat as they should be. Perfect form. Here she goes into a handstand. Watch this, watch these two movements. Right to a handstand, two flanges to a handstand and her dismount. Front with a half twist oh. and a perfect landing. Who can explain her talent? Watch this, two blind moves in a row, two back handsprings. Chris, not one break. Look at that. Calm. 
confidence. And a double twist. Oh, perfect. Sheer perfection. And, and this is a seventh ten or perfect score for Nadia Promenade. Now, Chris, back in 1976, in their rules, the content was worth 1.0, but general impression was worth a whole point, and that was very subjective and open for cheating. Now, in 2002, the only way you can get bonus points are by doing extra difficult combinations or skills, making it more quantitative and less room for subjectivity and trying to remove some of the possibilities of cheating. And maybe the bottom line, Nadia Komnich was just much better than everybody else at that time. At the time, her <laughs> routines probably earned an 11. Here's Juana Petrovsky. Romanian. Nicely done. We'll talk throughout the show about bonus points and start values. That vault there, for example, has a start value of 9.8. There's no way you can get a 10 on that vault because the judges have deemed that that's only worth a 9.8 if you do it perfectly. Back in Nadia's time, that could have scored a 10 even with a minor error because it was so difficult and the general impression of the vault was quite good. How many women in the competition have a start value of 10 or more? None. On this vault, okay. nobody's doing a 10.0 vault in this competition. We will see some 10 -0 start values on the floor, bars, and the balance beam. But no one in this competition can risk a 10 -0 start value vault. Oh, nice landing. Well done. Half on, front, half off. Very good technique. It's a 9-7 start value. Vault is known as a Podkopaeva. Named after the Olympic champion from 1996, Lilia Potkopaeva from Ukraine. And she does it beautifully. Very nice form and mechanics, and she lands right between those double white lines. No deduction for alignment. So her score, 9-3-6-2. And a look at the standings. Zamo Lochikova, Chusovitina, Petrovsky, 1-2-3. Ashley Postel, the American, has been pushed into fourth place. Another Romanian set to go. This is Sabina Kozokar. 17 years old. From Sibiu, Romania, which is not far from here. In Debertson, Hungary. All right, clean mechanics on that vault, but that's another one of those so-called full-on pike somersault off vaults. A lot of gymnasts are cheating this technique. They don't quite make it all the way around. She only makes about three-quarters of a twist before she pushes off to the pike back somersault. I think the start value for this vault is a little too high because the gymnasts cheat this technique so badly. 9-7 start value. She says that she's doing it in a laid out position, but it's clearly piked. So the second of two vaults, 9-2-8-7 on vault number one. First vault or second vault, harder? It depends on the athlete. She's going to do her harder vault now. Second vault, double twisting your Chanko. And that's nice, a 9-8 start value for that. Unfortunately, she didn't drill the landing. She's a very complete gymnast. She's quick, she has flexibility and technique, she's very balanced on all the apparatus. But of course, as we've seen here at the individual event finals, you have to be a specialist in order to win the gold here today. She was just a little off on that landing. Her second vault score, 9387, and her total score of 9337. So she moves into fourth place. That will drop Postel to fifth. And now here comes the great Natalia Ziganshina, world champion silver medalist. She does the same style of vault that we saw from Kojo Kara and a little bit better. A little higher and very impressive distance from the vaulting table. Watch this push off the horse. She gets her hands back quickly and watch the center of gravity rise up. That's what the judges are looking for in the post flight off of the vaulting table. Although the judges don't necessarily give you bonus points for landing farther from the horse, it does help with the overall impression of the amplitude of the vault. 9 4 one, two. So the Russian in the hunt as she prepares for vault number two. It's the average of two scores. Should be half on, front layout off. Yes, nice, the front layout with a half twist off. 
very nice mechanics on this fall. I really like how she gets from the vaulting board into the vaulting table very quickly. Watch this. Round off here and then boom, right onto the vaulting table, which allows her to push off and do a layout front with a half. Great second vault. The combination of those two vaults will score well for her here. Now notice she lands on the white tape. As long as she doesn't go outside of the white tape, she won't get a deduction for being out of line. Her second vault score, 9-3-7-5. Her overall score, 9-3-9-3. That won't get the gold, but it is good enough for the silver. Our gold medalist is Yelena Zamolodchikova from Russia. Natalia Ziganshina, another Russian, is second. Oksana Chusovitana gets the bronze. And Ashley Postel, the American, is with Bart. Ashley, this is the big leagues, the world finals. Uh, your impression of your performance just now? Um, well, I thought I could have done a little better, but I'm still happy with the way I've done. So. Now, your first vault, the landing was good. The second vault, uh, you looked like you got a good push off the horse. Maybe you were a little overexcited, perhaps. Yeah, I think I was a little bit there. I think I didn't really know where I was, so I took a big step forward. Okay, well, good luck next time. Thanks. Still to come, one of the most elegant performers in history, Russian Svetlana Horkina on uneven bars. The reigning world champion, Jordan Yolchep, on rings. But first, Paul Hom, American, tries again on the pommel horse. <laughs> Romanian Marian Dragulescu. Celebrating his gold medal on floor. And then, of course, the great Russian uh, vaulter, Yelena Zamolodzikova. Spectacular on vault. This is Funix Hall in Debrecen, Hungary. Along with my pal Bart Connor, I'm Chris Marlowe. We welcome you to the 2002 World Gymnastics Championships. We now move to the pommel horse. And Japan's Takahiro Kashima will lead off. Strong field once again. There are no weak fields at the World Championships. There are not. And the number eight right there, Marius Orzika from Romania, the reigning Olympic and world champion. He's one to watch. Kashima is 22 years old from Chiba, Japan. The Japanese men have won medals throughout the years on most of the apparatus, but haven't had a great deal of success on the pommel horse. Good combination there. It's very interesting how we're seeing the body types of each of these specialist type athletes. On the floor, we saw a stronger, stockier type athlete. On the pommel horse, the guys who are doing the best here are these rail thin, skinny guys with great technique. Good form. That's a nice exercise. First guy to go. He's just 127 pounds, and yet he's very strong. Good elevation over the horse. So Kashima of Japan leads off with a fine routine. Like this combination here in the flared position, he spins all the way around. That's called a spindle, invented by the great Hungarian pommel horse gymnast Zoltan Magyar. And he does it with a little extra flare very quickly up to the handstand at the end which is impressive to the judges he's going to get a good score 9 6 8 7 so Kashima setting the standard and now Francis Eric Casimir the 1994 European junior champion an up and comer what exactly are the judges looking for in a routine on the pommel horse, Bart? Well, there are actually five different element groups they have to show. Moves like that on one pommel, and this combination here of circles and flares in the cross support, as we're seeing as he's going down the length of the horse, as well as the side support when he's facing sideways. They need to see single leg work. Oh, a little bit of a form break there. Broke his body line, but he didn't separate his legs. He has some interesting combinations. Nice form throughout the exercise. 
Just that one little break in his body line, which will be a slight deduction. Boy, everybody in the final here is just incredible. Most of these routines are starting from a 10-0 start value in terms of their difficulty. This is a great combination, the Magyar travel in the flared position, and he goes right back with what is called a Sivado travel, and when you connect those two back and forth, you earn an extra tenth of a point bonus. 9650 oh, for Casimir. Paul Hom chalking up. We'll see him next, but before we do, his American teammate, Brett McClure, made it to the semifinal, the top 16. He had a good routine, just not quite good enough. Very nice opening combination there where he traveled down the length of the horse in that Russian-type position. He scored a 9.362 for this exercise, which placed him 12th out of the 16, but only the top eight make it to the finals here. He's a very balanced athlete, much like a decathlete. He's good on all the events, but in order to be a finalist here at the World Championships in an individual event capacity, you have to be almost a freak of nature on each event. And now 20-year-old American Paul Hom, the pride of Waukesha, Wisconsin, set for his routine. This is the longest shot for Paul Hom in terms of winning a medal at these World Championships. Nice opening sequence, though. Good travel down the length of the horse and cross support. Oh, he's struggling a little on that one pommel work. He manages to stay on the horse with only a minor form break, but he'll lose some bonus points for not connecting that combination. Oh, that's too bad because that was a good exercise and had potential. But by missing that one pommel work, he missed a chance at some bonus points for that combination. This is that spindled flare. He's doing it on the leather, and then he travels up to the pommels back in the middle of the exercise. Here's where he got in trouble. He's supposed to stay a little longer on that one pommel, keep his body extended, and do more complicated skills. So his start value all the way down to 9.6. And a 9.050 for Paul Hom. Very disappointing. And now China's Tang Hai Bin. Set for his pommel horse routine. Part of the... Chinese uh, fan contingent. <laughs> Everybody has their own little rooting section here. We talk about body styles. This guy is only 17 years old. It's about 105 pounds. Look at this long, lean body. He's as straight as a pencil. Great line. Good combinations on single pommels. Boy, the Chinese gymnasts are so good here. Marius Urzika, the reigning Olympic champion, will be last to go, but he has his hands full because Tang Haibin and Xiao Qin, both the Chinese representatives in the finals here, are just really good. So he seems happy with his routine. There is our leader, Kashima from Japan. Look at the technique on this triple Russian on the end. Great body line. And this is a cross-support travel known as a Magyar travel that most of the gymnasts are using here. I've been scored 9-6-6-2. Outstanding, but not quite enough to move him ahead of Kashima. Kashima continues to be our leader, Haibin and Casimir. Stay with us. More pommel horse action after this. Pommel horse continuing at the 2002 World Gymnastics Championships. Chris Marlowe and Bart Connor. That is Zhao Qin from China, 17 years old and already very accomplished. Second in the World Championships last year to Marius Urzika by 25 thousandths of a point. A very close contest, as I'm sure today will be as well. Chris, Pommel Horse is a very technical event, but I know you can appreciate it. Watch this sequence right here. Triple Russian, and then he travels it down the length of the wow. horse. That is just spectacular. After last year's World Championships, disappointed that he didn't beat 
the Olympic champion Orzika. He went home and beefed up the level of difficulty in his routine a little bit. Just 17, but he's pretty cool. Good composure throughout that routine. Boy, that is going to get a huge score. He'll be in first place after that for sure. It's interesting. You said uh, that he finished second to Zika last time around. They call him the vice champion. <laughs> like the vice president. vice president. He's the vice champion. This is that horse. sequence. I love this. All the way down the length of the horse. It's called a Guo Nian, invented by a Chinese gymnast. Of course, that's one of the greatest claims to fame of any athlete is to get a move named after you. A spectacular routine for Zhao Jin, 9750. Yes, he is our leader. And just like last year at the World Championships, he loads up the pressure on the reigning Olympic champion. Or Zika. I think in general, Urzika has a little more variety of skills in his exercise. A little trickier combinations. Let's we'll see if he can pull it off today. 9-7-5-0, score to beat. Very beautiful. Russian combination on one pommel. He's going all out. Pommel horse is one of those events that you could be swinging beautifully and then in a flash of a second, standing next to it. You don't even know what happened. <laughs> it's so easy to make a mistake. Oh, I love all the difficult elements he's doing after the scissor break. Oh, there's your winner. Marius Urzika. Xiao Chin says, I've been here before. Will Urzika it happen again? It's just remarkable. Little trickier combinations. Here's that Russian on one pommel. Nobody in the world does it like that. And I really like the idea that after he did his single leg scissor break, he did a lot of difficulty in the second half of the routine when you're normally a little tired. The judges appreciate that. The official score, 9787, Marius Urzika. Does it again. The world champion. And just like last time, Zhao Xin is the vice champion. Urzika the gold. Shin, the silver, Tashima, the bronze, and Paul Hom in eighth. He is with Bart. Paul, let's talk a little bit about that pommel horse routine. Uh, that is the big leagues with uh, maybe the best pommel horse workers in the history of the sport. How did you feel when you stepped up to do your routine? Uh, I actually felt pretty calm. It's just there it was a really great competition, a lot of great guys out there, and I made a little bit of a mistake on my flop sequence. Uh, you have to go for the hard stuff here, right? Though you can't do a clean routine and expect to uh, get a medal. So I've always appreciated your aggressive attack on the pommel horse. Oh, yeah. I, tr I didn't hold anything back today. I did the same routine as I did the other day. And the only way you could win is to put everything in there. So that's what I did. Still to come, American ringman Jeff Johnson goes up against the big boys. But next up, Courtney Kupetz gets her shot at a medal. Stay with us. The Sensational Dairy Museum was named for Freeish Dairy, who simply wished to donate his vast private art collection to a public museum. These four world-famous statues in front of the museum were unveiled at its opening in 1930. They represent archaeology, science, art, and ethnography, and were awarded the grand prize at the Paris Art Exhibition in 1937. Bunnicks Hall, built in 223 days, specifically for this event, along with Bart Connor, I'm Chris Marlowe. Uh, Guard Young, 
had a good world championship. Not great, but good. He did, and he was good on the floor. He had a very difficult exercise, a 10-0 start value for this routine and a good variety of skills. Showing his flared sequence, his tumbling, and he went for a stick on this landing. Came up a little short, 9-2-2-5. Left him in 13th place and out of the finals. Guard, that was an intense floor exercise semi-final among the best in the world. Uh, tell me your attitude as you stepped there, there to do that routine. Um, well, they kept us in the back gym, so we really didn't know what was going on until we walked out on the floor ready to compete. And I walked out there and looked up on the scoreboard, and here we had 9-5 was the lowest score. I just really kind of, you know, it really intimidated me, and I thought, well, I might as well just go out and try my best. Uh, struggled on the dismount a little bit, but I was in the air going, I got a stick, I got a stick. Was a little short. Uh, normally, I would just be happy with the small hop, but I knew uh, I had to give it everything I had, so. Taryn Humphrey is another young, up-and-coming American woman. 16-year-old, like the rest of the U.S. delegation here for the women. She had two great vaults. One and a half twister with a solid landing. And after this second ball, her average score of 9187 left her in ninth place, just out of the finals. Only the top eight make the finals. Missed the finals as well on the floor. A little bobble on that landing. Her tumbling was otherwise clean, and her dance is exquisite. Finished just out of the running for a shot in the finals. Taryn, how would you feel about your performance today on the floor? Um, I didn't have the greatest performance, but I tried to keep going, and I just got dealt bad hand this time. So. Well, you were uh, just short of the vault finals and just short of the floor finals, but this had to be a growing experience for you as an athlete, and perhaps looking to the future, this could be beneficial. Yeah, just making the world championships is a big deal, and hopefully next time it'll be more experienced and more confident. American Courtney Kupetz is in the house. Her specialty, uh, uneven bars coming up. For more, let's check in with Bart. So far, no medals for the American team at these world championships. On the men's side, Paul Hom finishing eighth on the pommel horse and just missing a medal on the floor in fourth place. On the women's side, Ashley Postel finishing sixth place in the vault. However, there are two more chances for the Americans to win medals today. 16-year-old Courtney Kupetz will compete on the bars with her new routine. She's in first place coming into the finals. Of course, Kupetz will have to contend with the legend of the bars, Svetlana Horkina of Russia. And the last chance today for the American men is with Jeff Johnson, the 27-year-old ring specialist in the finals with his amazing field, which includes world and Olympic champions. In fact, Sylvester Chalani, the reigning Olympic champion, has won five times the silver medal at the world championships and never the gold. He has a chance to do that today in front of his home crowd. Courtney Kupet's specialty, of course, the uneven bars. She is currently a 10th grader at Magruder High School. Let's get to know her a little bit better. Hi, I'm Courtney Kupetz, 16 years old. Now I live in Gaithersburg, Maryland. To be part of this team that's going to Worlds is very exciting for me because I've never done anything quite at this level, and so it should be exciting. My greatest strengths as a gymnast would be like consistency, I would say, and just being able to focus in on the skills I'm doing at that time and not think too far ahead of the routine. Going to Worlds definitely seems like one of the biggest things that's happened to me so far in my career of gymnastics. I'm not really worried about competition there. It'll be a little nerve-wracking just because it's a new thing for me, but I'm not really concerned or worried about anything. There's a little pressure just on ourselves because we want to do well, but yeah, there's, we'll just have fun and do what we can. I'd like to walk away with like the experience and just like the different things and then just hopefully a medal. That would be that would be really good. Well that is the question. When will the Americans win a medal? Will they win a medal? Courtney's up next. 2002 World Gymnastics Championships continuing on uneven bars. The American Courtney Kupetz. Set and ready to go. Chris, she changed her routine from the U.S. Nationals back in the summer 
and added a more difficult combination, which has served her well here. Beautiful amplitude on that transition. Now watch this move here. Hop with a full twist, right to the release. This is important. Nailed it. Boy, she caught right on the end of her fingertips. Her execution is terrific. Good form, solid cast up to handstand. Just the dismount. Oh yeah. Nice set. There's her coach, Kelly Hill. After the US Championships, he said we gotta modify her routine a little bit. Here's where they put in that combination of a hop pull to a release move, the Tkachev. Very high and cleanly executed. This is a move here called a Horkina. Get this, she's in the finals competing against the legend Horkina, and she's using one of Horkina's moves. The dismount is a full twisting double. I'll bet she wishes she stuck this, but she has to be happy with that complete exercise. It'll score well. Solid number, 9550 for American Courtney Kupetz. So Elizabeth Tweddle will go next. Got a bronze at the European Championships. She's from Great Britain. That was a historic medal for the Great Britain Gymnastics Program when last May in Patras, Greece, Elizabeth won the bronze medal there. She is very good on the bars. Great form. Really nice forward giant swinging and pirouetting moves. Now all those moves that pass through the handstand of pirouette skills need to happen within 10 degrees of the vertical to get the full credit. If you're past the handstand, you'll get a slight deduction for execution. Nice finish. She was born in Johannesburg, South Africa, now lives in Liverpool. Take a look at this sequence right here. This is also the Horkina. Half turn straddle back over the bar. Beautiful form and execution. Great to see a gymnast with such excellent toe point. You don't see that these days. Look at the form just throughout that full twisting double back. Toes pointed. 9-3-1-2. A little lower than I thought, but you know, when she went past the handstand on some of those pirouetting moves, the judges did take execution deductions. Romanian Juana Petrovski up next. Just missed a medal on vault, finishing fourth. She's great on the bars, though, and the Romanians have typically not been good on the uneven bars. Their last medal at the World Championships was back in 1993. Andrea Kakovian won an award there. Petrovski has some nice swinging elements, and she has a huge dismount, the most difficult in the competition. She'll do a double twisting, double somersault to finish the exercise. Oh, good strength there. Almost out of momentum, and she kipped up beautifully. Here it is. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Boy, she is strong. Let's take a look, first of all, at this gear. here. It's a back somersault with a half twist regrasp, and she does it in a laid out position. This is where she almost stopped. Watch on this transition from the low bar to the high bar. She is almost completely out of momentum, and yet she somehow cranks in the kip. Finishes with a double twisting double. Score to beat 955. No! 9525. So American Courtney Kupetz retains her lead. Yes, she does. Still our leader at the moment. Still plenty of performers to go. How about Svetlana Horkina, five-time world champion, maybe the greatest ever on this event. Could be, and certainly two-time Olympic champion, several European titles as well. Half the moves in this routine are named after her. Watch this here. Stall the reverse act. Oh! What a shock. It's a very difficult move. That's the same move that she missed at the Olympics in Sydney. 
with two performers to go. Kupetz knows she has a medal. She doesn't know what color yet, but she's going to get a medal bar. And who can expect in the finals of the World Championships that Horkina would go down like that? There's another move, one of her trademark skills called a Horkina. And, oh! and she biffs again. Uh, she looks almost a little amused. Her coach isn't. Boris Pilkin, her longtime coach, not happy or is he bored? I don't know, but. Two biffs in one routine for the greatest ever. She'll finish the exercise and finish way out of the medals. And American Courtney Coupets, who could have thought that the best ever went down twice? Big chance for the Americans to win a medal. Here is that stall to reverse hect. It's called a Rikna, invented by the gymnast Hanna Rikna. And then this transition called a Horkina 2. I mean, the move's named after her, and she, she missed, missed her it. her own move. And a very stoic. I guess there's no other word for Russian coaches. They're all stoic. And better days. That might be the lowest score she's ever recorded for any apparatus. 7387. So a very disappointing uneven bars for Horkina. Kupets retains the lead. Petrovsky and Tweddle. One, two, three at the moment. So Courtney Kupets, she knows she has a medal. Can she hang on for the goal? Continuing on the uneven bars, American Courtney Kupets is the leader at the moment. Two performers to go. Here is Russian Ludmila Yezheva. Kupets will get a medal, but if one of these women can beat her, she won't get the gold. Yezheva, most well known for her work on the balance beam, but also quite good with these nice combinations on the uneven bars. She really has three terrific combinations in this routine. Pirouetting skills to releases. All of these just rack up the bonus points. There's a one and a half turn to a brandy down to the low bar. Another nice transition and good form. A couple of times she was past the handstand in some of those pirouettes. It's important to be within 10 degrees of the handstand to get no deduction. Marina Bulashenka, the Russian coach. A solid routine, but will it be enough? This is the hop full pirouette known as a Chusovitina, invented by Oksana Chusovitina to the Ginga release move. Nice combination. One and a half turn to the Brandy down to the low bar. And one and a half turn is named the Dawes after Dominique Dawes from the American Olympic team in 1996. Little sloppy on this dismount. Form didn't quite stick. Remember, Kupet score 955, and Yezheva gets a 9375. So, Courtney Kupet, she's got the gold or the silver. One or two. And she is feeling good right now. One performer to go. And it is Tatiana Zaranova of Belarus. A fifth at Sydney. Can she uncork a performance here and perhaps steal the gold? Full pirouette. One and a half. Oh, she's off. Oh, she's in trouble. And Courtney Kupetz. Bart Courtney Kupetz is going to win the gold medal. She will. No chance that Zaranova can get a good score here. She was fifth at the Worlds last year on the uneven bars, but it wasn't there today. Just a simple tuck double somersault, and she is dejected. And Courtney Kupetz is going to be the new world champion on the uneven bars. What a set of circumstances here. A great final, so many great champions. Kupets was the most consistent with her new exercise, well-designed routine. And that was enough for her to win the gold medal because the score for Zaranova, 8-1-8-7, is not going to do it. 
So a 9-5-5 holds up, and yes, the Americans have won a gold medal. Courtney Kupetz gets the gold. Petrovsky silver, Yezheva the bronze. A marvelous performance for the youngster, Courtney Kupetz. Just 16 years old, eighth place in the all-around at the U.S. National Championships, where she barely scored over a nine on the uneven bars. She redesigned her exercise, came here with great form and execution, and delivered a performance of her life. Now the last gold for the U.S. women on the uneven bars was way back in 1993 with Shannon Miller. expect to come home with a gold medal? Not really. I mean, you always hope for a medal, but you never really believe you'll win a gold. Now, every day you're training in the gym, and did you ever imagine that you'd be going up against somebody like Svetlana Horkina, and you have to do great to just uh, win this thing? Well, you always think about it, but you never think it'll actually happen, so it's pretty exciting right now. Now, you change your routine specifically for these world championships. Uh, that looked like a pretty good move. Yeah, we added some skills and took out a couple, and I was pretty confident with it, so. What would you like to say about your coach, Kelly Hill, who helped you get to this point? Just all her experience helped me, like, when I was, like, maybe a little rushed or too excited, she calmed me down, and so made me, made me do a good routine. <laughs> well, congratulations. It's a great moment for the U.S. team. Thank you. The final apparatus is for manly men only. Rings. Stay tuned. This is the Hortobaj, Hungary's first national park and one of its most cherished treasures. In this massive nature reserve that was forged by the huge floods of the river Tisaw, you can see 300 varieties of bird life. You can even see the amazing Ratska sheep from Asia with their long hair and curly horns. Here you can see as well the Mangalitsa pigs. In the summertime, Hungarian cowboys put on equestrian shows and demonstrations celebrating the culture and heritage of this immense and unique region. <laughs> That's some pretty ugly pigs, huh? The Mangalitsa pigs, <laughs> definitely my favorite. <laughs> Phoenix Hall in Debrecen, Hungary. We're set now for the ring competition. Hiroyuki Tomita will start it off and what a field we have here. Absolutely, including the Olympic champion from Hungary, Sylvesa Cholani, and the reigning world champion, Jordan Jovchev from Bulgaria. This is the battle of the strongman and it's great for the Americans. Jeff Johnson will be competing as well. He's a specialist on this event. So Tamita will go first, but of course the story in this event will be can Sylvester Cholani win in front of his home crowd, but we'll start with Tomita. Just a couple of days ago, he turned 22 years old. Attends Juntendo University in Japan. Nice position there on the uprise to Maltese. Watch for these strength-to-strength -strength combinations. Historically, the Japanese have been so great on this particular event. Absolutely. And just like every other piece of apparatus, the gymnast must show five different element groups. Strength moves, of course hips and swing elements, a swing to a handstand, and strength moves from a swing position. This is a swing to a handstand, very clean execution, good body line, nice and straight in the handstand. Wow, and that's the first guy to go, that's an incredible routine. So setting the standard high, Hiroyuki Tomita. And the crowd comes alive as we watch the dismount. They're getting ready for Chalani. He'll be next, and this entire nation has been waiting for this moment to see Chalani try to deliver in front of the home crowd. 
There he is, getting ready. The reigning Olympic champion, but he has never won a world championship gold medal. And as we wait for the score, wow, 9637 for Tamita. Outstanding. But now we are set for a national hero. What enormous pressure on this man at 32 years old. He's on all the posters. He did all the interviews. He has been the whole world championships. He told me before the competition he felt the pressure of being in front of the home crowd. It's not necessarily an advantage. In Sydney, he won the gold. They said he finally became the Lord of the Rings. But now here's his chance at the World Championships. We talk about start values in these routines. Most of the finalists here have a start value on the rings more than a 10, about a 10.4, because they add extra difficulty just to make sure that they impress the judges. Kip to a Maltese. Press to plunge, and that's a strength-to-strength -strength combination, a swing-to-a-strength move, and a bounce to a cross called a Nakayama after the great Japanese gymnast. This is a nice combination right here as he lowers down straight arms to a move called an Azarian roll. Oh, a little short there. The strength moves are supposed to be held for two seconds. That one looked a little short to me. I guarantee you the judges will give him the benefit of the doubt here, though. He nails the landing. <laughs> Sylvester Talani. Look at that intensity in his face. <laughs> Crowd wants a 10. Don't think you'll get that, but it should be a high score. Now there's one guy here who can beat that performance, and that is Jordan Yovchev from Bulgaria, if Yovchev is perfect. Tolani for many years played second fiddle to Yuri Keki from Italy who kept winning world after world championship. Tolani was always second. So he kind of hung up the sport for a little while. Moved to the United States, took a coaching job back in 1995. But he found that he loved gymnastics and he could make a good living as a hero of his country in gymnastics. So he moved back to Hungary and he competes only in this event, the rings. Still waiting for the score. 9725 for Celeste Trelawney. And he is our leader. He looks happy, but he also has a look of concern. Is that going to be enough to beat Yovchev? High score, but not an unbeatable score, Bart Connor. So now, the Italian, Andrea Capolino. who has had some sensational routines in the past. Third at last year's world championships on this event, and he has very strong body positions. Maltese pressed to an inverted iron cross. Look at the extension in that iron cross. He's actually pushing the rings away from him instead of using what is a false grip that a lot of the gymnasts use to bring the rings closer and make those skills easier. Beautiful body line in that planche. You know, I mentioned the gymnasts have to show a swing to a handstand position, but nobody's really looking at the swing moves here. It's all about strength and combinations of strength skills. Nice double layout. Yeah. He landed even higher than Cholani. Great exercise, but I don't think it's enough to... Score ahead of Cholani today. Andrea Capolino with a fine routine. Watch this extension. Oh. Look at how he's pushing the rings away from him. And look at the striation in those muscles. Incredible position in the iron cross. Here's that double layout. A little better form and he lands a little higher than Cholani did. 
Sensational. So Capolino 9-6-2-5. And the Italian fans booing that score. So Cialani and Capolino setting on a high standard for American Jeff Johnson. We're going to see him next. Stay with us. Jeff Johnson getting ready for his rings routine. He began in gymnastics in 1984. He's a late bloomer and an interesting guy. 27-year-old Jeff Johnson of Seattle, Washington is an engineer for Boeing during the day. At night, he trains with the University of Washington club team. His blue-collar mentality and dogged determination helped him make this year's world team. It's different being in the club. You have to work hard. It's not Nothing's ever given to you. Uh, you work hard inside the gym. You work hard outside the gym with the guys. Everybody pushes each other. Everybody wants to get strong. The motivation uh, to get to the gym helps me at work, helps me get through that. But knowing I need to get to work helps me get out of the gym kind of thing. Uh, you know you have something to do. You can't, you can't not do it. I love strength more than, more than anything else. Strength is doing strength. There's no way around it. You, you have to do it. You guys got to understand that. that. It's not something you can do uh, once or twice a week, do some ring strength and, and hope to get any sort of strong. You have to do it every day. Uh, when you're hurt, when you're tired, when you're sick, it, it doesn't matter. It's something you have to do. And I think that helps at the end of a routine when you're tired to make it through those last few skills. My coach used to take strength away from me to punish me. Most coaches give strength to to, uh, to punish people. They'd take it away from me. You'd make me go to high bar. You know, so uh, it's something I've liked doing, something you have to enjoy, it's something, something you really need to like doing and want to do. It's just work. It's just a job. You just go out there and do it. And I think that helps me be consistent. I try not to put a lot of pressure on myself that way. This is fun for me. To me, it's a lot of work getting here. I just, I just want to have fun and do the best I know I can do. Fun time is right now for Jeff Johnson. His big opportunity to make a statement on rings. This guy is so intense. There's his coach, Mark Rousseau, who worked with him out there in Washington. Big moment for this young man. Just five feet, three inches tall, but he is all muscle. Solid mount. Watch this. From the Azarian roll to a cross, presses to an inverted iron cross. Nicely done. A swing to a strength move. Maltese and another bounce cross. Combination and a pull out to an L. So far, great control of the rings. They're not swinging at all. Oh, a little over in that handstand. You heard this crowd gasp at that and a hop on the landing. Unfortunate for Jeff Johnson. you got to believe there's 7,000 people here kind of hoping he'll miss <laughs> with Cholani on the sidelines. Look at the beautiful position in this Maltese. Bounce to a cross. It's called a Nakayama. Double layout, just short of rotation, unfortunately, and that hop is going to cost him. So Jeff Johnson awaits his score. Sylvester Cholani, our leader. A 9-5-5-0. A good score, which will move him into fourth place. And now we are set for Kazakhstan's Timur Kurbanbaev. We know very little bit about this gymnast, but we do know that he's got similar strength combinations that many of the others use. There's the same mount sequence, and look at his body position. is a little straighter than Johnson's even. Polite applause from the crowd. Most of these strength-to-strength -strength combinations earn him bonus points for doing them back-to-back. -back. 
Little wobbly in that handstand, and once again, a gasp from the crowd. They know what that means. Good landing, but you saw the little shakiness in the handstand, and his coach knows it. Kurban Baev. You can't come into Cholani's house and be at all shaky. 9.6. Very, very good. But not quite good enough. Cholani continues to lead, followed by Tomita and Capolino. Jeff Johnson drops to fifth. Can anybody beat Hungarian Sylvester Cholani? Stay with us, we'll find out. Five times that man has been the silver medalist at the World Championships. This is his chance. He leads at the moment, but his number one competitor is set and ready to go, and that is Jordan Jovchev. This is the guy who can do it. He is the reigning world champion. He was a bronze medalist at the Olympics. Jovchev will do a more difficult dismount than Cholani, which could look good to the judges if he could stick it. He has an amazing strength combination right here at the beginning. This move is called a whippet to an L cross. Now watch this. He's going to straighten his body out and then go all the way up to an inverted cross. Wow. Now the only possibility for deduction there is he's a little bit arched, not quite as straight as Cholani and some of the others. And again, from a cross, pull up to a Maltese solid. So far, this routine is comparable to Cholani's. Here's the dismount. He'll add a full twist. Oh! That hop is going to cost him. Just a little hop. Cost him a tenth. It'll cost him a tenth, and I think that'll be the difference here. Yovchev knows it. This is just inhuman, and here's a guy who has a partially torn bicep tendon, and yet he can do those strength combinations. Watch here. He adds the full twist. More difficult than the other gymnasts in the finals. But that hop is still a tenth of a point no matter how you calculate it. So, waiting nervously with his coach, Sylvester Cholani. Yovchev knows that was not his best routine. But how will the judges score it? Will it be enough? He's dying. Tough to go early and then to have to wait. Nine six seven five, sensational, but not good enough. Not yet. Sylvester Cholani continues to lead in front of a raucous partisan crowd here in Hungary. Two performers to go. Neither of them is Jordan Yovchev, Cholani's main competitor, but both are capable. And Cholani knows it. The gold is not his yet. So, Ivan Ivankov from Belarus, set and ready to go. He's a real stylist, two times the world all-around champion, and twice he won bronze medals at the Worlds on the Rings back in 93 and 97. A little bit high in some of his strength positions. It's important that all of those strength moves are down a little lower into the rings to get full credit and full connection bonus. Nice full twisting double at the end, but I don't think that's gonna be enough today. A solid score, but you can't beat Cholani with a routine like that. It's such good technique and style, body position, and presentation. Some of his strength moves were held a little high, and he added the full twist to the dismount like Yovchev did. But I don't think it's going to be enough today. Ivankov, 9 6 3 7. That ties him for third. 
One more performer to go. And Talani has the gold if it holds up. However, in the early 90s, it was Yuri Keki, the Italian, that used to frustrate Talani. And how ironic, it's an Italian to go last. Matteo Morandi. Could he do it? Could he pull off a stunner and uncork one here? Going to be tough to do at home here. There's 7,000 people who are hoping he kind of messes up a little bit, that's for sure. The final performer. Watch this opening move. Uprise to what they call a Maltese. Solid. Nice combination, straight arms, Azarian around to an L cross. Press back to Maltese. But the rings are swinging a little. Jelani had a little better control of the rings throughout his strength sequences. He's waiting a little too long in that inverted hang as well, but he did that so he could stop the swing of the rings, timing it just right. Crowd is quiet, deathly quiet here. One more swing in the rings after that giant swing. Nice landing, but it won't be enough today. And now the partisans here in Debrecen, Hungary. Getting set for the coronation of their hometown hero. They've been waiting for this moment a long time. Two years ago, the arena burned down in Budapest. They built this arena in a record 223 days. I think their whole country has been waiting for this moment to see if the hometown guy can deliver. Morandi was good, but today I don't think it was enough. One more look at an outstanding dismount. Yeah. So the numbers for Morandi, 9-6-5-0, and the celebration has begun for Sylvester Trelawney. The world champion on the rings. Five times. Paris, San Juan, Luzon, Tianjin, and Ghent. He was the runner-up. Not today. Matteo Morande is going to get the bronze. He is stoked. And officially, Jelani gets the gold. Yobche, his longtime nemesis gets silver, and the Italian Morandi gets bronze. In 1995, Sylvester Cellani said, I am tired of being a second fiddler, and one day I am going to win the gold medal in the World Championships. And today, he has done it. We'll talk to him when we come back. Bunnix Hall, Debrickson, Hungary, Rocky because the hometown hero has finally done it. Sylvester Cellani wins his first ever gold medal in the rings competition. And a partisan crowd of just about 7,000 really enjoying the moment. Jordan Yovchev with a congratulatory handshake. He gets the silver. And how about Matteo Morandi from Italy? Morandi uh, hits in his last uh, Routine and grabs the bronze. A sensational rings competition. Jelani gets the gold. How about American Jeff Johnson? He finished eighth, but he did make the final, and he's with Bart. Well, Jeff, as we came into the ring final, we said this would probably be the most hotly contested battle. Everybody was very evenly matched. Talk about your performance. Well, my performance wasn't bad. I, I'd, I'd lie to you if you said I wasn't disappointed, but I'd also lie if I said I wasn't excited to be here. And uh, I, I certainly can't complain. I, I did my set well. I wish I stuck a dismount, but that's right. I can't say I'm not happy to be here. I'm ecstatic. I'm, I'm happy for everybody. For USA, I'm glad I can make it this far. I certainly think that uh, I surprised a lot of people. I don't think many people expected me to get here. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I could. I'm glad I could help out the USA, and I'm certainly happy for all the people around me all my friends and family who came to watch me and, and people back home support me. Well, congratulations to you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. The amazing power and grace of Sylvester Jelani. It wins him gold in his 
native country of Hungary. World champion for the first time ever. A moment he will never forget. And he is standing by with Bart Connor. Sylvester, if you write a movie script, this is the perfect finish. Uh, tell me about your emotions of this moment. It's, it's so hard to tell you what, what do I feel. But if you, if you know what Simon knows, that uh, I have five silver medals from uh, world championships. So, and now I'm first. It just, I cannot tell you what do I feel right now. But I'm, I'm very, very happy. I know you felt the enthusiasm of the home crowd, but did you also feel the pressure? Of course, I felt the pressure when, when uh, I knew that uh, the world championships will be here. So, but, you know, that's why I call myself professional gymnast, because I have to handle the pressure all the time. It doesn't matter world championships or uh, Olympic Games. When you landed your dismount, was it a sense of excitement or a sense of relief that you made it? You know, all the time when I finished my routine, I feel that, uh, that I'm done. I did my job well, so I can be happy. It doesn't matter if I'm first or second. I, I, I did my best, the most what I could do. How do you describe this moment for your country? They're very proud of you. Jeez, I, I cannot tell you what do I feel. You know, it's so good to, to be first at home. Congratulations. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Five gold medals awarded. Three for the men. Two go to Romania, one to Hungary. For the women, Elena Zamolochikova from Russia. And on the uneven bars, Courtney Kupets gets a goal for the United States. Once again, Dragulescu repeats as the world champion on the floor. He just dropped out of the sky with that power tumbling. Olympic champion Yelena Zamolochikova popped her double twisting Yurchenko and drilled the landing for the world gold there. And the Olympic champion from Romania, Marius Urzika, withstood the pressure to repeat as world champion on the Palma horse. And for the American 16 year old Courtney Kupetz nailed her routine early. And no one could catch her. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Bart Connor and the rest of our ESPN crew, I'm Chris Marlowe. So long.